everybody. Today is, oh, it's hard to remember what day it is, isn't it? It's Thursday. And time to tune into yourself and turn off the chatter. We're going to do twist today using the chair. Um, so let's get started. To warm up, let's just have the chair facing you. We're going to put our left leg on that chair. Now, if you're short, I think this will still work. Yeah, it'll still work. Your leg may be a little higher, but uh, if, if that's the case and it doesn't feel stable, you could, well, I don't know. You're gonna have to do it, okay? So put your foot on the chair and on the standing leg, lift the arches, okay? And then we're going to lift the hands straight up lengthening, lengthening the spine, lengthening the leg, the leg is nice and strong, pressing down on the chair with the left foot, and then come on down, okay, and repeat, lengthen, lengthen. So you can divide your body in half, the right side with the standing leg, the left side with the bent leg, okay, and imagine there's a median line, right down the middle. So the left side has the bent leg, the right side has the long leg. And extend your consciousness down into the foot of that right leg. And then up into the fingertips of the right hand. Press down the left foot to help you have that consciousness in the right side of the body. Okay? And now let's put our right foot up on the chair. So you notice I have close to a right angle here. Okay. And we're going to repeat. So I'm pressing down on the right foot, lifting the arch of the left foot. Okay. Lift, lift, lift. Move the buttock flesh down. See if you can pull this hip in a bit. Okay down. Now lift up. Remember we're bringing consciousness to the left side of the body, dividing it in half. This time you're going to find your left foot, lift your left arch, and really extend your left hand. Push down the right hand, right foot, to, to, to make that process a bit more accessible to your brain. Squeeze the upper back. Come on down. Press on the right foot, lift the right arch, and lift both hands, divide the body in half. Find the consciousness in the left side of the body. And come on down. Okay. And to review the big lesson of Fishman method for yoga osteoporosis is hip flexion, without back flexion. So if you haven't found a piece of wood or a pole or a broomstick, in the next day or two, find one that you could practice. Bending your hips without bending your back. Remember, this is bending your back. So it's like a clothesline in your piece of clothing going over the clothesline. And come on up. Okay. So again, now we'll start with our left foot on the chair again, and just put your hands in front of you. And we're gonna open and close, open and close. So however far your arm swings, it may fit, swing comfortably this far, just go that far. Open and close. Keeping this shoulder stable, again, we're bringing consciousness to the right side of the body. Bringing the arm back and forth, back and forth, okay. And now the left side. Let me just move my chair. Okay, so we have the right foot up. And we're going to swing the left arm out and back, keeping everything else stable. So isolating that left shoulder movement, opening and closing the gate. Keeping the spine long, 
the standing leg strong. And come on down. And now let's just sit in the chair. Pull on the bottom rock, pull on the seat and lift up. Drop the sit bones. Find the spine, that strong, straight center line. And now we're ready to twist. So it, well, let's just move our head to the right, to the center, to the left, to the center. And then turn and look over your right shoulder. Turn and look over your left shoulder, only as far as is comfortable, keeping the spine upright. And left. And come back to the center. Okay, so today we're going to twist. So if you imagine this is your spine, we want a nice long spine, and then we're going to turn the spine. Okay, so the important thing is to keep the spine upright and straight, which requires you to use your ab muscles in your upper back and lift the chest. Now, can you imagine if you let yourself slump and turn, you see, you create, you grind the vertebrae against each other. You create action or a movement that is not productive. It is not protective of your vertebrae. So you want a nice straight spine that you can turn. So this means you don't push yourself beyond the spot where you're able to hold yourself upright. Okay? So we're going to start with the chair facing you. And it's nice if you have a block. If you don't, it's all right. But I'll show you how to use that. We're going to put our right foot on the chair. Now the block is just here to hold your hip in place. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to turn and put the hands on the wall behind you. Okay? So that's what it is. It's turning. Turning, you can even do it without a wall. Turning like the beacon of a lighthouse. Okay, so when you're here, when you've turned, you can put your hands against the wall. You're going to pull your right hip socket, pull the right hip socket in slightly. Lift the arches of the left leg and breathe. We're going to stay here for another 30 seconds. Again, don't push your, if this is where you're rotating, stay here. Turn your beacon north, northeast. Due east. Okay, lift up. So I'm putting some pressure on the foot that's on the chair. I have the handy block between my hip and the wall to keep it from, without the block, my knee might drop. I might lose the nice straight lower back. Okay, and I'm squeezing and lifting. I'm squeezing the upper back but lifting the front. And come back to the center, and we'll now go on the other side. So turn your chair, put it very close to the wall. If you have a block, you see how I positioned it between my thigh and the wall. So that means my foot is on the far side of the chair. My standing leg toes are forward. Okay, and let's just lift that right hand, drop the buttocks. See what I did? I dropped the buttock flesh down. Lift the chest up and then turn. We're going to hold this pose for a minute. So I'm lit, and I will talk. I'm lifting the arch of the standing foot. I'm pressing my left foot onto the chair. I'm slightly pulling back the left femur bone into the left hip socket, lengthening the spine, bringing my chin down slightly, breathing, squeezing the upper back, 
activating the abs. If you don't have a block, just check your thigh, that your thigh is parallel to the wall. The knee is not against the wall. The thigh, the outside thigh is parallel to the wall. Okay, come on out. And we'll do one more variation of Marichyasana. Okay. Again, let's see. Let's put our right foot on the chair. And we're going to reach with our left hand for the back of the chair. Okay. And then turn. So I'm turning towards the bed leg. And again, I want to look at the outside edge of my right thigh. Is it parallel to the wall? Keeping my spine straight. So I'm not cashewing and then turning. If I did that, I would be crushing vertebrae here and here. So straight back and turn. And let's go to the other side putting my left foot on the chair. I'm going to reach and notice my toes on my right foot are forward. They're not sideways. Point your toes forward. Reaching for the chair with your right hand, moving the buttock flesh down, not up, down. Okay, and you can put both hands on the back of the chair. Check in with your back. If you feel you can't grab the back of the chair, you can just hold your hand up here, okay? If you feel that this is, you're not able to do that without crunching your back, hold the hand here, okay? And turn, and try to keep this thigh parallel with the wall, meaning not out like this, okay? And you hold this pose for, for a minute. I don't know if we'll hold it for a minute now, but you could do it this way. You could hold on to the back of the chair and turn. Press down with, on the chair with your left foot. Lift the arch of the right foot. Smile. And come forward. Okay. So that was the pose of the day, Marichyasana, which stimulates the vertebrae. Again, remember, when you twist, keep the spine straight. Don't let the cashew happen, okay, where you will stress the vertebrae rather than refresh the vertebrae. Twists are like miracle poses. You can hold a twist for a long time. They generate heat and fire in the body. And they squeeze the internal organs and then unsqueeze them. Squeeze, you can imagine all of these organs who may be lazy during the day because you're sitting or watching TV or whatever you're doing during this time. Maybe you're not as active as you're used to being, so the twist gives all these organs a nice squeeze and release from the liver, the stomach, the intestines, the lungs, everything feels good and fired up after a good twist practice. So be careful, be awesome, and remember, peace begins with a smile. I'll see you next video.